Hello. Good afternoon. This is Robert Jeter. You're on the Robert Jeter Show. Coming to you live, unedited, off the cuff. Just giving you my three, four cents worth of what I think what's going on. It's a hot Friday in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, I just got back from vacation the other day. So uh, back in the groove here in my little studio in Atlanta. Uh, and I hope all is well with you. I hope you have a good weekend. It's TGIF day. Thank God it's Friday. In fact, every day you should thank God. You know, every day I wake up and I'm still here. And the world is still in one piece. I thank God. So, uh, you know, we have to realize who's in charge, right? Um, so what am I going to talk about today? I was going to still talk about Kamala a little bit and Israel. I mean, because it seems to seem be the two forces at play on the stage right now. Of course, Trump is always there, right? But I'm talking about as far as negative forces and positive forces in the United States being negative and Israel being positive. And in the context of who's in charge, right? Because right now, the Democrats, the socialists, the far left are in charge in the United States of America. In Israel, God is in charge. Well, God's in charge everywhere. But more or less, Israel is a more righteous country than the United States currently. Even though Israel has a lot of problems, they have a lot of crazy leftists in Israel, like they have a lot of crazy leftists here in the United States. But still, it's God's land. You know, Israel was given to the Jews, and the Jews were, th were the first people who brought the idea of one God to the world, you know? I mean, you had the Old Testament coming way before the New Testament, way before the Koran, you know? So it's a land of righteousness. It's a land of right. It's a land of the light and the right. And where we got over here on the left, it's like a boxing match. You know, in one corner, you got these guys. In the other corner, you got this other guy. And, well, it's actually a woman if you're talking about Kamala. And I was listening to uh, one of my rabbi friends online. And he was saying uh, Kamala in Hebrew is the same... If you same use the same letters, the same gematria as Amalek. Now I don't know if you guys know who Amalek is. It's a group of people, and they really are the arch enemy of the Hebrews of the Jews. I think they're descended from Edom, Edomites, uh, and uh, you know Edom's and Canaanites. You know all these bad actors, groups of people. Uh, I won't go into their original origins at this point, but they're the bad guys. And Amalek was particularly bad because uh, we first see them come up and attack uh, the Hebrew nation as they were leaving Egypt, and they came behind them and attacked the weak uh, among them first because behind them. And they were just spiteful. They didn't, I mean, it's not because they wanted Israel's wealth, it wasn't a Hebrew wealth or their land, where they weren't even in the land, and they were in the desert. So they had nothing really to gain. It was just a spit in the face of God, basically. And so that, those people, that, that evilness, it's always been around, and it's always taken various forms, you know. Whether they are actual Amalekis today, I mean, that You'll have to ask a rabbi. But the same evil is here, right? And it's just weird. Of course, I don't believe in anything being coincidence. The Kamala, same letters, if you uh, you know, spell it in Hebrew, the same letters Amalek, same uh, gematria. So, I mean, she is definitely, any way you want to look at it, she is on the dark side. I mean, like I said before, she's a Marxist. She's a rebel, she's a radical, and she's proud of it. Uh, and thank goodness she's incompetent, because I think the world will see it. You know, and, and hopefully she doesn't have any, any possibility of getting elected president of the United States. Heaven forbid. It would be, the world would be over. It would be a total disaster. 
you know. I don't think God is going to take it that far and blow up the world because if she got in power, it would blow up the world. I don't think God wants to blow up the world totally, you know. He's going to make us pay the price for all the evil and injustice that's going on. But, you know, sooner or later, the light's going to come through, uh, you know, and we're going to have the redemption. Hallelujah. Right. So that was interesting uh, to see the biblical context of what's going on. I mean, you can look at, at, at you know, the wars between uh, the West, the Jews, and Islam, the jihadists. I mean, right now, Israel is really fighting a seven-front war. You know, you have Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, the Houthis, Yemen, Iran, and Gaza, all fighting against Israel, this little country. And it comes back, goes back to the days of the patriarchs. You can go back to the patriarchs and see how this all developed, the beginning of the, the tensions that are going on now, the same tensions they had back in the day with the Hebrew, Hebrew, Hebrew patriarchs. You had Abraham, and Abraham had Isaac, which is a good son, and Ishmael, who his wife said, Sarah, you know, says, I don't know about this Ishmael person and this, his mother. You know, I think you ought to let him go. And so he had to uh, send them away. Uh, and, and through the desert, and they almost died. You know, the angel came and they did save them. I mean, there is a redemptive, uh, redeeming, I should say, redeeming factor for Ishmael. He is uh, a part of a God's plan, but he's always been a thorn in the side of the Jews, and it continues to be so. But I think the war is winding down. I mean, it's not winding. I mean, it's going to build up before it winds down, but I think... Iran is really between a rock and a hard place right now. I was just reading this article online, and I might quote some of it. It's written, I'll give a guy credits, uh, David uh, Rusmer. Who is David Rusmer? I'm not sure I know. He has a PhD, an American uh, foreign policy specialist. He says... Uh, the fellow at the Miscav Institute uh, for National Security and a Zionist and Zionist tragedy. He served as a Middle East advisor to former Vice President Dick Cheney. Not that I'm crazy about Dick Cheney, but he did advise Dick Cheney, at least under the Bushes. They weren't so crazy, you know, and so supportive of the jihadists like Obama and Biden and Harris. But anyway, he just wrote an article, and uh, what's the title of the article? It's called, Iran Now Faces a Hobson's Choice. Hobson's Choice, I looked it up. I wasn't sure what it was. It came from a movie. It came out in 1954 where some, I think, divorced father had three daughters, and he had to marry them all off, and he had no good choices <laughs> to do that. I, don't, I never saw the movie. So I don't know all the details. But anyway, it means basically you don't have any good choices. So he thinks Iran now doesn't have any really good choices, especially after the killing of those two uh, uh, commanders, the jihadists, um, that they killed in the same day. They were really high up uh, the ladder uh, for, for the uh, Hamas and the jihadists. So it says the impotence of the regime whose sole currency is based on a reign of terror is being exposed. Uh, maybe I'll read a little bit of this. Have I got a little time? I'm going to read this article, okay, by him, and I end with that because I think it's such a good article. If press reports are accurate, not only Hezbollah, but Iran itself is preparing to launch an all-out attack on Israel. Such an attack could include up to seven fronts, as I rep mentioned including Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, and the Houthis in Lebanon and Yemen, along with Iran itself, Gaza, Judea, and Samaria. We likely stand on the precipice of the next phase in this war, the direct showdown between Islamic revolution of the Iranian regime and Israel. Although this grave reality is seizing headlines around the world, most appear to be missing uh, 
how big a moment it is. It definitely is a big moment. I mean, in the next couple of days, might tell the tale, right? Because it seems like Israel's preparing uh, for a big attack from Iran. Because the mullah there says, you know, we're going to attack Israel directly now, since you've hurt us so, so much and killed our, our guys, um, our, our main guys. It's called Sinwa still hiding, hiding out in some hole. Anybody seen Sinwa? <laughs> it must be the real top of the uh, mosque leadership, but anyway, he's hiding, he's like a rat. So Iran faces, he goes on to say, Iran faces a classic sunk investment in which whatever money has been made is history. The net balance is now a loss, and sinking more money into it only promises more loss. Such is Iran's great ring of fire war against Israel. The war started on October the 7th with an Iranian victory by its proxy Hamas an immense growth in stature and influence. Iran was especially successful at seizing the region's strategic and geopolitical momentum to be the benefit of itself. Its axis of rogue states and its geopolitical great power allies of Russia and China. But since Israel entered Rafah and severed Gaza from the rest of the world by seizing the uh, Philadelphia Corridor, Iran's successful war to re- redefine the region around its e- uh, eclipsing power has become a retreat. Operationally, the IDF is beginning to reach peak performance, much like the U.S. Armed Forces by the late spring of 1942. Interesting, that compares the Second World War and the, our military in 1942, what's going on with Israel and the IDF against Hamas and Iran. The IDF is now fielding weapons that did not exist half a year ago. It is a heavily trained, well-equipped force, and moral remains astronomical. It is exercising power unimaginably far beyond anything it possessed in October of 2023. So indeed, there's a few more paragraphs, which I won't read it, but that sums it up basically Israel is in a lot better position than it was a year ago, obviously, even though there's a lot of stress in Israel now and some fear. But according to him, and I believe he could be true, could be right, um, and this article could be definitely right on, um, you know, Iran is about to feel the pressure uh, from Israel, and uh, its, its days are numbered. I mean, the people don't like, the people in Iran are not for the mullahs, the majority, you know. Um, so it's not like China where every, all, the, all the individuals uh, are more or less support, you know, the communist regime. So, uh, so that's good news for the weekend. So we don't know what the weekend's going to bring. You know, tomorrow's Shabbos for, for Jews, and we're entering sort of a... a a period of mourning. So, you know, they love to attack us when we have our holidays and we have our rest days. So it, if there's going to be an attack tomorrow or Saturday, I, I wouldn't be surprised. But we shall see. But just remember who the good guys are and who the bad guys are. It should be obvious, right? But, you know, so many people have been brainwashed. I hope you haven't been brainwashed. That's why I'm here, to make sure you haven't, you know, uh, haven't had too much of that Kool-Aid. And, uh, you know, you're not caught in the matrix. You're taking the red pill, right? <laughs> All that good stuff. Anyway, I played a little Highway Redemption on the way out, and because uh, that's what we need, some redemption. redemption. This is Robert Jeter on the Robert Jeter Show, Blues in the News. Uh, have a good weekend, and see you next time. I can feel the highway under my seat Hey, summer's burning, I can feel the heat Yeah, my dash is warm, but my top is down Got my tail to the mill for higher ground When I get to the crossroads, I won't At the fall of lies, no I'll well, have the four angels Step inside, take a ride To the other side I broke down in Tennessee 
Get back to Georgia seemed the death of me But I was passed by Elijah's hand No promise of bail would ruin his plan Down on that highway I was blinded by the light Said the salvation was up ahead inside Knew it was right Shining through the night